We're in Palm Springs right now. The scenery is beautiful and we're joined by the most dynamic, versatile, animated and maybe arguably the best duo in the game right now. Earth Gang, how are you guys feeling, guys? What's happening? Feeling What's good, happening? feeling good. What's good? How's the weekend been going for you guys? Beautiful weather, nice vibe out here. How's everything with it's you been guys? smooth, man. All the girls looking great, all the drugs getting hot. <laughs> yeah, it's a good it's time. It's been a beautiful time. Uh, that's the first right thing I wanted to do is just like congratulate you guys on Death of an Artist because we've been listening to it nonstop. Amazing project. And I think the first thing that comes to mind for a lot of people is like just that idea for that title and just the whole vision behind Death of an Artist. Um, it kind of came from, I mean, you know, us as like creators and stuff, I think there's a like a fine line between creating for yourself or creating for what you want or the message you want to get out and then creating for consumption. You know what I'm saying? I think when you create for consumption, you kind of like, you, you killing the essence of your art, you know? And I think it's a lot of people, you know what I'm saying, fall in the victim for that, you know? Yeah. Like, people just like, well, I got to make some content today, no matter if it goes along with what they got going on or anything. It's just like, this is the first thing that I got to do. So they kind of turn into a machine rather than, you know what I'm saying, a living, breathing thing that has ebbs and flows or whatever. And yeah, throughout yeah, your guys' yeah. creative process, sorry to interrupt no, you, I was just going to ask you guys, you know, you were talking about that, like how you feel like it's maybe a bit difficult to be able to create art in this sort of space now because of the AI and because of technology. So throughout your guys' creative process, like how do you guys like achieve that and how do you move around that and still create the art that you guys want to do? I think you just gotta make what feels what feels natural, feels organic, what comes from your heart the natural way. I think uh, you know, processes change, you know what I'm saying, with all artists. Like you might be painting with acrylic one day, you paint with watercolor the next day, you might switch brushes, you might do spray. But like if you getting the painting across is that's what matters. So when I when I see stuff about like the AI and like the different types of ways that like artists create it, I don't necessarily look at it as a complete detriment. I think it's just another like obstacle to make human art a better experience. You know what I'm saying? It's like, well, then not be really creative there. You know what I'm saying? We have a challenge presented before us that generations before us didn't have. So it's like, get around it, do it, make it better. Yeah, yeah like, like I was gonna say to um to that point. So like the the fits that we wore on stage. You know what I'm saying? To the first weekend, the Nike fits. Those were a collaboration between AI and actual creative artists and ourselves. You know, so like. I think the 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 challenge and the exploration comes into like learning how to infuse that with your creativity. You know, if we we saw these AI generated images and we was like, you know, this is hard, but like let's let's tap into an actual artist, an actual designer, an actual seamstress, and and allow him to have his creative freedom and ability. You know, not copy what the computers made, but like, yo. We see this, and now let's see what you can do to it and, and how you can make it. And shout out to Peter Cho at Utopia. Shout out to Nike and stuff. But, like, that was the idea behind that project. Like, those fits were from AI-generated concepts, but we wanted to make sure that the creative was always involved. So, you know, a lot of people don't have to feel like, you know, oh, shit, they're going to get rid of us. You know, like, we, we've been seeing movies created mm -hmm. with AI and it's like, oh, are they gonna get rid of directors? Yeah. Are they gonna get rid of screenwriters? And it's like, I mean, not really. It's just another tool if you really know what you want to put forth. You know? Yeah, I think it's pretty cool though. You guys are like embracing it because a lot of people, I feel like artists especially, are kind of afraid right now about like AI potentially taking over the music industry. But at the end of the day, like even as a listener myself, I feel like the reason why we love the music that we love is because humans are making it. You know, we yeah. feel that connection from a human and like, all like the latest AI like spinoffs of like people taking artists' voices and creating songs. Yeah. That shit's not hitting, bro. And like maybe the technology's gonna know. get I better. I heard this one song by you heard this one? Yeah. Fake Drake in the Fake Weekend. It was a <laughs> banger, bro. I'm not gonna lie. Some yeah. of the stuff he was saying was too close to home. I was like, man, actually, bro, he has. I don't know. It's a learning tool. So I'm gonna say it like this. It's how I feel about AI overall. Honestly, singularity is inevitable. It's just about. One, your perspective and your attitude of how humanity is going to go into it. And two, how you how you enjoy the ride along the way. To be quite honest, it's like, you know what I'm saying? And our ride along the way is Earth Game versus the algorithm. That's like the overall, like, arching ca campaign for, like, you know what I'm saying, the next series of, of developments that we'll be putting out and Death of the Artist being the first installment. So, like, we're going to fight it till, till we can't no more. It just is what it is, yeah. you know what I'm saying? It's just like in the Matrix, like, Neo fought until he couldn't no more, but it didn't mean necessarily that 
the machines were wrong. It wouldn't mean necessarily that the humans are wrong. It's like whatever happens is going to happen. Was yeah, it? and I think that even like as digital creators ourselves for like Lua and I, when we're doing our content and when we're putting together stuff, there's so many different tools with AI that you could use to even enhance your craft. And yeah. let's say for workflow, right? Like you guys put in crazy amount of hours a week. I think we all do. And there are certain things with AI where it helps you enhance your process and get to a better refined product. So I think that... The more that we learned how to work with these things and we learn how to implement them in a healthy way for our creative process where it's not blocking anything, the better result that we end up getting. But, you know, just talk to me about death of an artist and how, like, you feel like AI might get to that at a certain point, you know, like, do you guys imagine that in the future at any certain point? I'm going to say I think in the future it's just going to be hard to know the difference. I'm not going to say it's going to be like a blatant, like, robots got it now. I think yeah. the line is just going to get so blurred. It's getting blurred as we speak yeah. before our eyes. Eventually the line will get so blurred it's like, well, I don't know the difference unless I really, really trust the artist. And if that's the case, that's, I mean, why do we trust any of these artists? It's really all subjective. I that's think, I was going to say, I think, um, I think in the future it'll, the beauty of it will be more in the, the cohesiveness and the teamwork between humans and machines. You know, I think when we all think about like crazy shit like Atlantis or, you know what I'm saying? Like if you get into super mystical stuff, it's like, oh, these people had these ideas, but they also built these structures to work this way and to do this. And I think that's always been the story of like humanity and how we move with technology. Like, I mean, I. The fact that we still fly in planes is really crazy to me. Like yeah. we do this shit every weekend and I'm like, yo, we really in another location, like far away from people. And it's like shit happened over a few hours. And like nowadays it's not as far fetched, you know what I'm saying, as it would be a hundred years ago. But it's still a very human experience as well. You know what I'm it saying? Is. It's not like, oh, just hop in the plane, let the machines do what they do. Nah, you still on that bitch with other human beings and y'all having a real experience. So I think the human experience will never like be completely snatched out of our relationship with artificial intelligence, you know, and I and I, I love that. Absolutely. Um, before we move on to the next segment, I just wanted to ask you guys, if you had to make a playlist of songs that maybe inspired the creation of Death of an Artist, what would that be? Because that's something I always like mm. thought was fascinating. Like when Jay Z actually released that playlist that he had for making like four four four. Yeah, this was crazy. Just like songs that he was like listening to in the crib. Um, what would you guys have in that playlist? Let's say. Um, Hollywood divorce. I would say um, Coco Roco. Okay. Um, um, their 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 music for me puts me in a space of um kind of just living in the, the, the world outside of constant, uh, con like constant communication or constant input, you know what I'm saying? Or constant output. I think their music lives in a space where we can just live as human beings and stuff. So yeah. you get those juxtapositions of being outside in the world, communicating every day and then having that retreat space of like getting better to know who you are, know how you feel, so yeah. So let's talk about the track list because Death of an Artist is an EP format, five songs, and there's a lot to dive into, especially for five songs. You guys packed in so much content matter and so many different things that tie in this overall theme for Death of an, Death of an Artist, excuse me. So talk to me about the EP, like what was the vision with the writing? What were you guys trying to get across overall when creating the album and into the writing sessions? Um, honestly, a lot of the songs were created um, without a concept in mind, you okay. know, we were kind of just creating from life experiences, creating from living and, you know, freely like that. I think the first song that we recorded from that song was Imagine. Okay. But the song that was... Let them rock. Yeah, I'm gonna say, you can talk about Imagine, Imagine, Imagine the first song. Shout out to my boy Natra. Shout out to Natra. Natra Average, he produced this shout side. Shout out to Rama. He produced... Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, me and Natra's on this side. Uh, he did, what else? He produced uh, American Horror Story. Yeah, nice. Yeah. He produced, like, some really good songs for X back in the day, too, yeah. since I was young. But that's my dog, man. I be going over Natra House a lot, playing video games, and we'll just start making music. So, like, we was playing Sifu. Y'all know if y'all ever played Sifu? Never it's this game. Of, it's this game about being, like... 
being like a martial arts master, but every time you die, you get like two years older. So it gets oh, okay. harder to play as you lose. So you got to be good. Is there like an age limit? Like are you still playing at like you start up, You start off at like 21, and then like you, if you get to 80, you die. Like, but oh, like shit. you get fucked up as an 80 year old man on the game. <laughs> but like yeah. I said to say, we playing this game, and it's got me just thinking about like, dang, imagine, imagine if every day in your life was good, and that was like how we kind of just started. Like, I was like, damn, I kind of wouldn't want that. And then we just started, like, kind of going off, you know what I'm saying? Well, that's what I it's think written. is interesting about Imagine is that when I was listening to the writing, it's like you guys are creating this sort of, like, utopian state almost, mm. whereas if, like, life is supposed to be perfect from your guys' eyes. So, like, looking at that concept, like, do you guys feel like one day you want to achieve that and get to that sort of place? Maybe when you have grandchildren where, like, everything's just calm, every day's a good day, it's nice and sunny um, outside all the time. Like, how do you guys I feel about think, that? I think... I, as human beings, you know, we'll, nothing will ever be perfect, and yeah. I think that's I think that's beautiful. Yeah. But I think that there are certain bottom line things that human beings should be able to have, or should be priority. You know okay. what I'm saying? Like, things, certain things are not priority, so they cause chaos in the world and cause like you know irreconcilable things between friends, relationships, all of those things. And it's just like, yo. If these were the 10 things that we focused on, you know what I'm saying? 15, two things, three things, like you said, like imagine only eating fruit. Like if if we focused on like waking up every day and like, oh, just have a, have a bite of apple, like whatever. Like I think pe the small things would make a difference in people's lives. You know what I'm saying? You might go out and get hit by a car. You don't know. You, you don't know, but at least you felt good before you stepped out because you had a nice, <laughs> nice. And with Imagine too, we constantly like pulling the rug. Like we making it feel cool. It's like paradise, but it's at your fingertips. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Imagine letting words slip. Like imagine being super close to what you want and then saying the wrong thing. So it's like just it's like getting close. You know what I'm saying? The whole throughout the whole song. You know what I'm saying? It's like imagine slaving. Imagine patience. Imagine trying to be still. Like just imagine being still at all. Most of us can't even imagine that. Let alone yeah. being patient, let alone being a slave, you know what I'm saying? Like, I walk it backwards and forwards the whole time. Or, so. or imagine, like I said, imagine it if I were you and you were me. Like, yeah. I think in this life we really don't consider other people's circumstances, you know what I'm saying? And we judge people off of their actions, and yeah. we judge people off of what they say and stuff. And he's like, you never consider, like, how that person grew up, like, how that person was shaped and molded and, like, what forced this person to have these morals you know what i'm saying a lot of people think the morals and character was chosen but a lot of times that shit was forced on you as like young by your environment and shit and we got to give the people the freedom to explore that and understand like really who they want to be and or understand like who they are in this moment and why they are and i think that'll that'll change a whole lot of um relations in the world and you know people might be able to get along yeah and on that song you guys were like rapping and like singing about like just enhancements you guys wanted to like see for the world and like does writing that kind of, that, that kind of content matter like make you want to make improvements in your own lives because you're kind of like maybe manifesting or like putting yourselves into a certain direction where maybe you know you'll, you'll you'll see those improvements take shape yeah i think if you think about certain things in your life enough you'll naturally start to like adapt them into yeah. your life so i think yeah yeah i think for me um especially with with this I can't call it a job because it's, it's more than that with this passion and with what we love like it's um it's very demanding you know so I think during the down times and during the times where we're not constantly in front of people or constantly putting out consumption and stuff like I make sure that I'm living in a space where I'm like completely looking at how I live my life how my relationships are what I want to do better how I want to live in a more, more peaceful environment you know what I'm saying and, and all of those things kind of like bleed over into the music sometimes you know even if you're talking about some wild ass shit or some crazy shit it's just like outside of this um you know i should i should be able to live in a state of self-created bliss absolutely and lou and i were actually talking about this when we were listening to the project and one song that kind of plays close to what you guys are talking about right on the EP is Flavor of Karma, where mm -hmm. you guys are playing in like this alternate universe, this alternate reality where let's say you guys were working at Google or let's say you guys were just chilling out and like you guys weren't living this hectic lifestyle of being on the road or constantly creating and sacrificing your time for the greater good of your fan base. So mm -hmm. how did that concept come to be? Was there a certain moment within this whole recording process that you were like, oh shit, like I can maybe make a concept around this and kind of show the the listenership that maybe there is an alternate 
sort of reality yeah. out there for and us. And that song's funny as fuck. There's like that one line where you guys are like, I just fucked like Karma's mom. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and yeah. And then she, she loved it. Like that shit was yeah. hilarious. There's a lot of like <laughs> yeah. one-liners in the project yeah. that just made me piss my pants. Like even on the intro, um, when someone at the end's like, uh, is that his baby mama yeah, up there? She <laughs> did. Like that was yeah. fucking hilarious, bro. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's my dog, Nick. Yeah, yeah, yeah man. Nick. <laughs> the Flavors of Karma concept came from like, that was another one, you know what I'm saying? Made at the house type song. I like I like making music at, at my crib and my homies' cribs. I ain't too crazy about the big studio vibes. I like I like the conversations and the jokes and shit that go into music. So like I like maximum just whatever comfortability people walking in and out, whatever. So we in, we have one of them kind of sessions. And like uh I don't know, bro. I think Earth Gang in general has always been real into interdimensionality. I think like, you know what I'm saying, the the strays concept, the Rad Robots Royalty, we always have been on like these you know what I'm saying, intergalactic, interdimensional journeys. And I think this was just a chance to just really lay out just that as a concept, just be as as quirky and as funny with it as possible. <clears throat> so like all of those lines is like, just like me looking around the room and thinking of stuff and just like, well, at least the beginning of the song, like me just looking around the room and thinking of stuff and just seeing it. Like my brother had just got a job at Google at that time. Yeah. So I'm like, shit, in another life, I could have got that nigga job. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. We be doing this. Cause you know what I'm saying? There was a time when he rapped, you know what I'm saying? It just is what it is. So I just be thinking about like all the possibilities. Yeah. That's fire. Um, but uh, yeah. one song that we were talking about a lot this past week and has been Die Today. And I think like the most interesting part about it is that when you listen to just the production, it's super upbeat. You have like these summary strings, it's very bright, but the actual writing is, is dark. It's about yeah. actually like passing away. And I'll tell you my interpretation. You guys tell me if I'm like kind of envisioning it the right way, but I kind of viewed it as you guys making a statement by like juxtaposing the sound and the writing by saying like, there's two sides to this coin, right? On one side, um, you know, losing a loved one is one of the most tragic and traumatic things we can go through as humans. But on the other side, I mean, it's a celebration of their life and yeah. it is a time to kind of relive those memories and moments and i don't know if you guys ever like have heard of this but in ghana what they do is they actually have like these fantasy coffins yeah yeah and they, be they believe like in an afterlife yeah. and what's cool is I that like those. let's yeah. say you were like a photographer they'll actually like custom design a fucking camera into a coffin yeah, and like yeah, bury no. you in that shit I and saw it's this just one it's beautiful this dude bro. was like buried in this like shotgun this dope barrel shotgun and yeah I was, like that's pretty cool nah that's <laughs> nah, I, hey man I, i'm so blessed that you was able to get that out of out of that song. I produced the record. You and, produced uh, that yeah, with fire. Yeah, produced the bro. record and and um and 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 just writing it because you know what I'm saying like we death to us is no stranger. I'm sure that's the same to everybody out there. You know, a lot of people don't like talking about it. You know what I'm saying? And it's really, I feel like it's one of those parts of life that people don't talk about the most, or like they hate talking about. It. And it's like you know, I think we have to have a better relationship with it. I don't know when it became this gloom and doom thing i think you know what i'm saying everything else in life is ebbs and flows you know what i'm saying mm -hmm. but Absolutely. i think death has become a oh no nothing yeah, there's no other thing on the other side of this Absolutely. you know what i'm saying and i feel like that was the reason why we had to like really introduce it into a different aspect because you know death is not the final thing and you know even at funerals, you smile and you laugh, you know what I'm saying? So it's like, it's, it should not always be this. Like, I've stopped wearing black to funerals years ago. You because know especially in our culture, for Italians, like us, like our grandparents and grandmothers, it's tradition actually to wear black for like six to eight months yeah. out of the year. Get the fuck I, out I, of I, here. I swear to God. No, no, no. My great grandmother, after her husband passed away, stayed in black every day for the rest of her life. What? Yeah, for the rest yeah, of her life. Yeah, it's it crazy. gets crazy. Like why? What's, the, what's, the, what's well, the why? It's because, why? I, yeah. yeah, well, I kind of explain it from like the way that I see it like Italians are very passionate people and we're very family oriented and we, we move as a unit you know either if it's the Sunday pastas or if it's let's say you know the Easter's and the Christmases like it's very family oriented so when someone is kind of removed from that link it feels like a part of yourself is kind of lost to a certain mm -hmm. extent and especially mm -hmm. for like the older generation depending on what type of religion you follow and depending on your faith as a human being it kind of puts it into a different perspective for them where it's very negative. It's almost as if something was stolen for you. Mm -hmm. Oh, my bad. And then when you look at it from like the other side, at least for the younger generation, it's more of a celebration of passing now. It's more of like, oh, okay, this was mm -hmm. like, mm -hmm. this was cool. This is a journey. Like my uncle passed away in mm -hmm. 2021 and that was really like the first death that kind of like hit me in a certain way. Mm -hmm. And you're there and you're wondering like, 
sheesh, how should I sort of interpret this? Should mm. I, you know, be in a mode where I'm more negative, where, where I'm more, let's say, um, I'm more down, and then like everything around me is on a lower frequency, or should I try to analyze that life process and apply the things that my uncle did that yeah. made everyone happy and like, mm -hmm. you know, manifest that throughout my own journey? Yeah, I think know? it's like a big cultural thing. Like I went once to like this Irish funeral and that shit was lit, bro. Like people were like yeah. dancing, they were yeah. laughing and I'm like, yeah, that's wow, like, and, and I've never seen anything like that before. For sure. You know? And I, my, so my grandma passed in 2016, I think. Okay. And then my father in 2018, like two Sorry years after that. Appreciate it. So it's like, about that those were like very these were the closest people in my life other than my mom you know so these were the two people who i saw every week talk to every, like all the time and and i had to play it's funny because I, I flew out to la like like the day before her funeral right so we were coming mm -hmm. back my father called me and he was like yo the drum at our church can't make it you got to play the drums you know what i'm saying and i'm like damn like like i gotta i gotta be at work at my grandma's funeral you know what i'm saying and it, but but that was, I love I love making music. I'm a producer, right? So I I love that. So to be a part of that process really showed me like there is like an immense joy in this morning space, in this morning state. And then after that, even after my father passed, like it was just like you know, like you said, culturally, like I I follow traditional African tradition. So with traditional African tradition, you always supposed to respect your your ancestors and communicate with them constantly. You know what I'm saying? It's not like this person died, I'll never speak to them again, or this person died, I'll see them when I die. You know what I'm saying? It's yeah. not like that. Yeah. We have constant communication with them, whether it's through nature, whether it's through, you know what I'm saying, like looking at they, they pictures, keeping their pictures on the wall, or like calling out their names constantly, and their spirit and energy is with you. So, you know, and I'm, I'm sure it happens in other people's lives too, but you might be thinking about one thing and then you just bust out laughing at something a person said, years ago that's not even here right now and it's yeah. like you know like we want to keep their memory and they laughter with us so i was you know with that it's just like you know death sucks it's a it's a extreme mourning period but it gives us a possibility to see life in a more beautiful space it, it gives us a possibility to also connect with the people who died in a more beautiful space there's less oh you did me wrong there's less you hurt me or there's less i it's like you know now we now it's just intuition right now now it's only feeling yeah it's, it's not really mistakes it's not really like distance it's only feeling and it's only intuition and i think that type of communication is is, is truly beautiful you know one, yeah. one more thing we wanted to kind of get across with that today was uh how like sometimes I, i've always felt like when you uh I feel like adventure time described it the best when you die like your essence kind of like spreads across the world like osmosis Mm -hmm. I think that's what happens. We th I think we see that the most real time with like artists. Like when the artists die, everybody all of a sudden understands this bar. Mm -hmm. You see in the deep mm -hmm. cut album songs get mm -hmm. pulled out more. Mm -hmm. Everybody talking about the songs mm -hmm. that you know was not hitting. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like you know what I'm saying? So like a lot of false perception. It's, 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 it's because like I feel like it's just when you die for some reason. Mm -hmm. The people that are still on the planet gain a greater understanding of you, uh -huh. which is always creep me out, but always been the case. I think, yeah, yeah. And, and it's crazy, and I'm glad he mentioned that because, like, we wanted to really, really focus in on that, on the video and, and everything we did. Like, because when people die, they, they get so much love, and it's like, you know, why why was this love not here? You know what I'm saying? What I would say, was it because I made a mistake yesterday? You know what I'm saying? That you're not loving me the same today is because that I, I'm no longer here, that you're giving me all the love that I deserve and stuff. And it's like, you know, like we said, we want to question that, understand like why are those things this way, you know? And the video's tight, you know what I'm saying? Like- Love people while they're yeah, here. Yeah, love people while they're here. Understand, it, even when they gone, you get a better understanding that like, yo, this person wasn't perfect. They didn't have to be perfect, but, you know, at least they tried their best. And if they didn't try their best, they probably came back already. <laughs> just to do it yeah, again. Like we just want to give you our flowers, like to you, just for creating such a beautiful project with this that gives people so many different perceptions on life, on different dimensions, and just like how to react to your environment and yeah. just how to adapt to different moments in your life that really mark you. So and honestly, plays, thank you guys for that. For sure, thank you. And it, and it plays perfectly into you know what I'm saying? The concept of not of like true death, but like also like the symbolic death that some artists are going through. You know what I'm saying? Where it's like I don't, I don't really know how to create right now in this world, or I don't even really know how to create with AI. It's like, well, maybe you should just take a little break. 
take that creative yeah, like let's say pause to be yeah. able to recharge because yeah. one thing that I at least I carry with myself for like my creative ability is that like you can't wake up and be creative like it's impossible you know like you're not going to say hey fuck this like I'm, I'm creative today and then create the best material of your life like you have to go through moments in your life and experiences that shape that creativity to where now you could pour it into your art yeah. and sometimes that takes time but let's go on to the next segment I think we're good with this yeah I feel like when it comes to this EP and pretty much every project you guys have ever put out, the synergy is always perfect, the chemistry is always there, and it always made me like wonder, are you guys always in the studio together, like when making these songs, or like, will you send in a verse and you guys cooked it up in like different places? What's like the vibe with that usually for you guys? It depends on the song. Uh, for Ghetto Guys, we was, we was together for about half of them. Okay. Uh, for this EP, I, don't, I feel like these was all done separately yeah except for Bobby Boucher except for Bobby Boucher we did Bobby Boucher together yeah uh but like the, he did the wake and and die today and I did flavors and uh well, we was technically technically together we for flavors of karma because we were I recorded my verse on tour oh yeah on that's tour true, with that's the true. gorillas I, and I started I started it at home and then brought it on tour yeah and I just realized how much I enjoy recording on tour <laughs> how is that because I used it's to hectic like, you know yeah I used to be like it's you cool, know let actually. me rest let me let me keep my voice because we singing every day going out yeah. going crazy but I think um that that's that that adrenaline and that energy um just bleeds over into the music bleeds over into the records you know and I always now when I talk to artists I encourage them to like if you're on the road like Make sure you record, you know what I'm saying? Don't just like, like that's a lot of creative energy that you output and then input because you're getting so much energy from the fans every time you come. It's just like, there's a lot, you're generating a lot of energy and make sure that you put it somewhere, you know? Even if it's like making a little beat or something, like it's whatever, like. Just get the hands busy, Yeah, you know? just stay busy and, mm -hmm. it, and it keeps, it's, it, it builds another beautiful part of routine. When you're on tour, you need routine, if not, and that's when your shit starts to sound, you know, trash when you pull up to the next city and stuff. <laughs> starts to get a bit scary. Yeah, yeah but, it, but it, what's cool too about like traveling and creating, at least something that like I've been noticing with Lou is that you kind of absorb the culture of your environment yeah, to a certain mm, extent. Yeah, so mm. let's say, I'm not sure for you guys, the way that you guys, let's say, lay down your melodies or the types of, you know, let's say sounds you're bringing into the productions, like does your environment have an effect on that sort of recording process for you guys? Hell yeah, it does, bro. I went to Puerto Rico for my birthday one year and made a song in like Spanglish. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> like I don't really, you know what I'm saying? It just, it just is what it is. You know what I'm saying? Like wherever you at, you, you definitely absorb it. We've been in London recording this sound in a certain way. Yeah. We've been in, you know what I'm saying? Die out today. here. Yeah, I'm about to say, um, die today. I produced that. I was um, in the Johannesburg Lounge when oh, I started wow. working on that, you know what I'm saying, lounge in Johannesburg on the airport, just feeling like, okay, you on the go, you you got a little restless energy, like you should do something to, to keep you consistent, you know what I'm saying, or even just recording Flavors of Karma on the road, like if you hear my verse, um, like the background is all muddy and stuff, it's cause like we in the, we, we in the back room, you know what I'm saying, mm -hmm. the green room and shit, and it's so much going on, but it's like, you know, just, just give it give it what it what it's supposed to give and not worry about all that other stuff yeah, yeah that's, that's fire and something else that i uh, that i thought about too is that like when it comes to flavors of karma or something like imagine i feel like you guys were in a super like meditative and introspective place so that makes me think like was most of this ep written was a lot of the records like freestyled what was the process I'll be in that honest. Sense? imagine and flavors was freestyle wow oh, that's sick. that's crazy I think, bro. Uh, imagine yeah. I, wrote, I wrote imagine drunk with Natra at night, <laughs> but not, we was just like literally just, uh, that's why it's like them long tones and shit. We was just in there. Guys, yeah, uh, getting uh, Where you guys uh, shipping that night? Uh, Natra was making, so my dude Natra was making these homemade seltzers. Hey. He was making these seltzers and mixing them with, uh, we was mixing them with the Terra Mana at the time. Mm -hmm. Fire. Yeah, shout out to The Rock. Dwayne yeah, shout The Rock. Shout out to Dwayne. Terra Mana Johnson. <laughs> yeah. That, that song is for you. <laughs> <laughs> and um, like, I think I wrote Imagine and like, 10 minutes you know what i'm saying like very very easy very free the funny one of the funniest ones the wake was also the first record it was also recorded on the road both parts of it the 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 instrumentation um came from a sound check you know what i'm saying like our oh, md and stuff like they they just like played around to kind of like check the levels and stuff but i we was sound checking and 
I heard it, y'all, this shit so far. I, I turned on my phone recording. So I just started recording like all the stuff that they were playing, brought it back, loaded it up, kind of like arranged it a little bit, and then just started like writing like a poem, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, as far as like, you know, what will happen after I die or even in these spaces. But like, those those records just become a part of, it's like a living and breathing thing, you know what I'm saying? I don't really want to sit and take too much time on the record. It's good to be intentional. It's good to think about what you want to do. But after that, it's all about execution. Yeah. I'm going to be honest with you. I, I don't think I wrote... I don't wrote a thing down for none of these songs on this EP. But it's not that, I don't think, I'm not saying that on some like Jay-Z, I don't want taking everything. I just be going there and I'll try like a lot, a lot of lines and then just like eliminate the lines I don't like. But like I, I, I just like, I just like feeling as in the moment as possible. So I just go in there and just say stuff. Like I like feeling that action and that energy of like the beat real time. So like even with like flavors, like niggas went in there on flavors, you know what I'm saying? We had Rick and Morty playing, like we had like, you know what I'm saying? The TV just going, like, we just in there just saying anything. And then, like, I didn't even have the lyrics to that shit to even give to the band until, like, a couple of days ago. Wow, I had to okay, write it down wow. to give to the band, so I was just like, yeah. So, like, it definitely it definitely was, like, all these, all the songs on this. I mean, a lot of the songs on, on the last couple projects were like that, too, Maryland and, and Ghetto Guys. But I think uh, it's... it's I don't know. I haven't, I haven't done nothing on the straight written side. I, on Spillage Village, I wrote a couple of them. But I haven't done nothing on the straight written side in a minute just because I've been feeling like it's now, you know what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah, like, this is fucking like, impressive. Like, yeah, just grab it, grab it in the, you know what I'm saying? It's not all great. I make a lot of songs that, you know what I'm saying, are not going nowhere too, but like I just keep going like that. Yeah, I think it's just yeah. crazy to us because like the verses are like super articulate and yet everything is like more or less freestyle. So is that something you want to carry on like moving forward with like the yeah. next projects? And Yeah, I mean, I've been doing it for a minute. Like I said, yeah. I, most of this shit I write about is super real life experience. So you know what I'm saying? In another dimension, I never fell in love, never did drugs, never did shit to get locked up. All that shit I did. So I was mm -hmm. just, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's just life, so. Yeah, what I find cool too about your guys' writing and like the process is that everything is super cohesive and like well connected together. Like what you guys do so well is that you guys both bring different perspectives and a different flavor to the sound, but yet it feels like there's this streamline of consciousness that comes out through the art. So like when you guys are coming together for a concept, let's say throughout this whole recording process, how do you guys make sure that you're in sync? Or was it just something that happened naturally when you guys first started? Like, how does that process between you guys come together? Um, I think it's, uh, it's, it's just, it it's kind of hard to explain because it's, it's one of those things where you can work on it and you can be intentional with it and it can work, but you can also be intentional, try to be intentional with it. And sometimes it doesn't fit how you may want it to fit. True. And then there are other times where you don't, you have no intentions and it's just like, you know, I just made this like, what it like here to see, see how you feel yeah, about I think, it. I and think it's the like, key for a lot of our music is, is carving out those moments though. Like we make a lot of stuff and it's like, well, these songs all sound the best together. And sometimes what that means is these songs all sound cohesive between the guys. Mm. So it's like, let's put that together, let's order them, let's see how we're gonna do it. Or even in the creative process, it's like, you know, because we are human beings and we have shared experiences, but also different experiences, it might be uh, something that, uh, a feeling that he's feeling that I haven't felt yet or that, I'm, that, I, that I'll feel in the next two months, you know what I'm saying? So it For might sure. take some time for a record to develop and vice versa. You know, I might have this experience that I'm talking about and he hasn't had that experience. So he- Yeah, I ain't, I ain't have on that today for a long ass time. I, I I was like, yeah, no, nah, I feel it, but I, ain't, I wasn't feeling like thinking about like nothing around that subject. And then I just got clever one day, you know, you know what I'm saying? I was like, cool. But like, that, that's a perfect example of like what he's talking about. Though. Does like, that happen like, often that like a record maybe gets left into limbo because like sometimes. one of you guys are in the place, okay? We, we have sometimes. hella records in limbo. Right? That, I think that I think that is just a, a part of being different people, you know? Yeah, like, absolutely. And I, and I think like that respect and that that helps understanding that helps understand the process more, you know what I'm saying? And it also improves things because when you guys are feeding off of each other, example for like Lou and I and even the team in back, like 
a collaborative process is not necessarily always supposed to be easy. It's supposed to be challenging because you have these sort of ideologies that you got to break through and that you got to go through. So the question I have for you guys is that when you guys first started making music, you know, like let's take it all the way back. What was that ideology and has it stuck through every single process that you guys have gone into for albums or EPs, let's say? Yeah, I think I think when we first started making music, it was all just about um, articulating the life experiences, you know, and of course when you 15, 16, 17, and you going to school every day, you seeing each other every day, you hanging around the same friends, and you trying to figure out life in high school and going to college and doing the same thing. Those life experiences are similar, but as you grow older and, and, and you know, life happens, you have kids, you have families, you, you get, you know what I'm saying, you have relationships, and these things happen, and those things happen. The life experiences change, but the essence is it's all about really finding the essence of those life experiences you know what i'm saying to put into the music for sure you know what do you guys have coming after this because if you go back let's say to your previous releases you guys had projects like a rags or robots or royalty that ended up leading up to the final stop which was mirrorland so what are you guys having what do you guys have coming after this well i'm gonna say this because i already said it before the whole campaign is Earth Gang versus the algorithm. So we'll be doing a, a series of, of projects under that campaign. So it's going to be like three different EPs leading up to we don't know the how album? Many. We don't know how many it's going to be. It's just going to be a series of episodes as we fight this fight. Yeah, and are we going to see the songs from Death, Death of an Artist on Earth Gang versus the algorithm? We might. We, we, we might. Know, right, right. It's, it's basically it's, okay. we're basically unfolding it like a comic. You know, yeah. we just have issue after issue. It's like, you know... This is the title, and this is the next episode that we have been that we're living in, you know. So we want to keep it living and fluid, you know. We want to make so sure that's that until, until, for, for until Earth further finds notice, exciting as fuck. Then yeah, yeah. until yeah. further awesome. notice, you could think of all the releases as like a deconstructed album, mm. like one big thing. That's Jeez. very interesting. Another thing that I wanted to bring up just before we wrap up the episode is the comments underneath TikTok, all right? So you guys have your TikTok account going, and yeah. someone had commented about this JID and Earth and collaboration album. I know you guys aren't going to give me any dates or anything, but I mean, you guys like, you know, gave us too many that. classics. Not to give us the <laughs> yeah. album. I, you know, when you're looking at Meditate or The Vision, yeah. like, yeah. Man, we, definitely, we definitely need to do that. Yeah. Um, we probably have one in hard drives or two maybe in hard drives. Oh, that's from interesting. All this shit from all this time. But I just feel like where we all are right now, we probably would want to just start some new shit. Hmm. And just interesting. Make a bunch of new shit. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And speaking yeah. about uh, collaborating with Dreamville as a whole, Revenge of the Dreamers 4 is something that people have been waiting on for years. Is that starting to like be worked on? What's the what's the word with that? I mean, I think I the I conversation think, has heated the fuck up. Yeah, mm. and I think we I mean, every time we do Dreamville Fest, we we understand the power of our collective brand and the power of what we do together and individually and how it brings it all together. So, we always, you know, want to continue to tap back into that, you know what I'm saying, that treasure trove and say, you know, this is an untapped, you know what I'm saying? Always we continue to be an untapped mind of something that we can pull from and give to people, you know. Would you guys plan to do something similar to Revenge of the Dreamers 3 where like it's like a couple of like days where you guys are cooking everything up in ATL? Like, yeah, I think I think, I think yeah. that would be cool. It's yeah. going to be interesting because of how the last one went and the last one got so crazy. People was making fake invites and like, <laughs> yeah. you know, that we got crazy. Yeah. It was, I don't know where we could house what might be a lot of overflow. Like I remember at one point or last time I was looking over and I was sitting next to Chris Bosch. And I didn't even know that shit. I was like, bro, this is getting more. It was like that Rick and Morty episode where like all the imaginary characters kept popping. I was like, bro, this is fucking crazy. So I don't know how we're gonna accommodate in this time, but I think that would be better. That would be fire, bro, yeah. for real. Um, but yeah, listen, it's been a pleasure having you guys on the show. We're so excited to see what comes next for you guys because Death Fun Artist is one of my favorite projects I've heard all year. I think it's one of the deepest, and it's one that any hip hop fan, any music fan in general, will get so much value out of just because. Aside from the very in-depth concepts, it's just beautiful music to listen to. Summer vibes, right. for sure. Something yeah. that you could play in the whip and that right. the homies would look at you straight. You know, like it's not going to be like, oh, you got to take this <laughs> off. But right. uh, guys, listen, thank you so much for coming through today. Incredible conversation. And guys, Death of an Artist is available on all streaming platforms. Go run up those numbers. Fantastic value, guys. Thank you so much for coming. And we'll catch you in the next episode, guys. Peace. Appreciate y'all.